the curry paste, add chopped lemongrass, chili, fresh ginger, garlic and kaffir lime leaf to a pestle and mortar. Next, put in aromatic ground cinnamon and coriander, a pinch of salt, black pepper, then bash it into a rough paste. Finally, add olive oil to loosen and your paste is done. Now onto the pork neck. Add a glug of olive oil to a hot pan and brown the diced meat carefully. Making sure each side hits the heat, locking in that flavour. Remove and in the same pan, cook sliced onions until brown around the edges. Add the curry paste and fry to release all the intense flavours. Then put the pork back in, along with the coconut milk and stir. Next, add chicken stock, palm sugar, more kaffir lime leaves, soy sauce, and fish sauce to taste. Then simply simmer for an hour. Slow cooked for succulents, spicy, super easy to make, and wonderful served with fresh mango salsa, pork neck curry. Pan on. Get that nice and hot. You think of the sort of density of a pork chop, how it needs a little bit of help. Sweet and sour peppers go brilliantly well. First, slice the peppers. That's the flat side of the pepper, so stand it up. Trying to slice a pepper on the side is a nightmare. There's the centre. Start off. It's almost like sort of peeling an orange. Go all the way around and down. And look. That's what you want. Now, place the pepper down. Three finger rule. One finger in front, two behind. Pinky holding it down. Thumb holding it nice and flat. The flatter the vegetables, the more confident you are when you slice. So, don't worry about the speed. Just let the knife do the work. And take your time. Speed comes. The most important thing is to get your technique right. Red onion. Now, swing sour peppers, olive oil in. I'm going to saute them, which is just the chef's term for shallow frying on a high heat for maximum taste. Some salt and pepper. Add a tablespoon of sugar. Sugar helps to break down the peppers quicker, but caramelizes the onions. Frying them in a frying pan, perfect. It's one of the sort of basic essential tools of any kitchen because it's so multi-purpose. Great for sauteing, tossing, Great for cooking fresh and meat. Push away and pull back. Push away and pull back. That hissing is something you need to hear constantly because the minute that's gone, your peppers and your onions start to boil and you really want them to soak it. You now start to see it glistening in a way that it's starting to caramelize. Sugar's working beautifully. That's ready for the red wine vinegar. In. Smells incredible. It helps to stain the peppers as well. Look at the glaze now. You can see the sugar. It's worked, it's magic. Turn down the gas and add a couple of tablespoons of fresh extra virgin olive oil. Let them stew for two to three minutes. Now, I want to make the peppers nice and light and sort of sweet, aromatic. Just roll the basil, almost like a big cigar. Slice. Basil in and then literally cook it out for 30 seconds. I want them off. Beautiful. OK, pan back on. And now for the pork chops. I want to make sure they don't curl up in the pan. If they start curling up in the pan, they're going to cook unevenly. A few simple cuts through the rind means the chop stays flat and cooks evenly. Point the knife down. Flip through. Just season them beautifully. Nice large shards of pepper. Punch that through lightly. Guaranteed that seasoning is going to stay there. Hot pan, a touch of garlic and a touch of thyme. And the garlic, take a couple of cloves. Don't peel it, don't chop it. Just knife on. Crush it. Olive oil in. Just starting to smoke. Top of the chop, in. And lay away from me. 
keep that heat in the pan. Put the garlic in there early. A nice fragrant bunch of thyme. See how the pork has stayed nice and flat. Turn that over. Look at that. Beautiful. I want a little bit of thyme underneath the Start squeezing that garlic out. I want the flavour coming out. Butter in. Thin slices of butter. Tilt the pan and baste. So I'm sort of speeding up the cooking process. At the same time, I'm keeping the pork chop really nice and moist. And now look at the colour of that butter. It's almost like sort of a nut brown. Check the colour on the other side. Beautiful. When they're that thick, three and a half to four minutes each side. 30 seconds from now, they're going to be medium, so I'm going to take them out and let them rest. The secret to perfectly moist pork chops is letting them rest almost as long as they're cooked in the pan. A nice spoon of these peppers. The basil smells incredible. Get that garlic on there. Be generous with that vinaigrette for the peppers because it really is incredible. Do two things simple like that, pork and peppers and your confidence is going to shoot through the roof. A stunning pork chop with sweet and sour peppers. Loin of pork, rich, sumptuous. It's the most tender part of the pig. This is better when it's slightly pink. Yes, that's right, Granny, pink. First of all, you have to score that fat on the outside. You get some really nice, crispy crackling. Score. If you haven't got a sharp knife, I mean really sharp, use a standing knife. It works brilliantly. Stuff. Just slice into the centre and open it up. And look. Lemon zest. It gives it a really nice, summery, zesty lightness. Sage. Sage and pork go brilliantly well together. Parsley, garlic. Nice little thin shards. Salt. Pepper. Olive oil. It's like a blanket of aroma. Fold it over, just like an envelope. Thai. Put the string in the pot to stop it from running around. Salt, pepper, olive oil. Mop it up. It smells amazing. It's not even cooked yet. Straight in. Hot oven, 45 minutes. Just the smell of that is amazing. Look, crispy cracking. Rest. Untie. Carve. Nice thick slices. That's what I like to hear, that noise, the crispy crackling. Tender and delicious. Fragrant. Lemon zest with the sage and the parsley. Extraordinary. Pork loin with lemon and sage. Done. Take a very sharp knife. Bring the pork belly towards you so you're over it and you've got all that pressure and weight. Using the tip of the knife, I'm just sort of nicking it. And go across the pork belly. Long strokes with the knife. And take your time. Turn it 180. This time, what we're doing is just sort of cutting those nice little sort of diamonds. But as that starts roasting on top, it starts to get nice and crispy. Take little handfuls of salt and just sort of rub it in. Bend it over and in all those cracks really helps to get a nice crisp crackling on top. Roasting tray, get it really nice and hot. Take a whole bowl of fennel. To intensify flavour and to keep the meat succulent, I'm braising my pork belly with strong, vibrant spices and vegetables. Crush and peel three whole cloves of garlic and add to the fennel. Olive oil in. Fennel in. I like the nice, strong aniseed flavour that goes with that nice, rich, dense pork. Fennel seeds, delicious. Star anise. In and just a couple of cardamom seeds. And wow, they're like little bangers, like little firecrackers. Incredible. Lovely. Fresh bay leaves. Get your pork skin side down. Just sear the top of that fat. That locks in all that amazing flavor. 
Then I'm going to flip it over and get it nice and crispy. And then I want fennel seeds embedded in those little cracks. Now, some white wine. The minute that white wine hits that pan, you can just smell that light fragrance from the fennel. Allow the wine to bubble away and reduce until the alcohol has burnt off. Time to have the stock. Now, the stock goes in just underneath the skin, so it roasts on top. All that meat under there is going to be submerged, because what happens in the oven? The top goes crispy as anything, and the stock reduces and braises at the same time. Really important that you bring that back up to the boil before it goes in the oven, otherwise it will never boil, never get up to temperature. It smells incredible. Slow roast the pork belly at 180 degrees for two and a half hours. Look at that. You've got that nice, crispy skin on top. You can see how much of the stock has evaporated. Put that onto the board. It looks stunning. To make a delicious rustic sauce with the flavour-packed contents of the roasting tray, first, get rid of the excess fat. Take a couple of slices of bread. It's like a perfect sponge because you just lay that on top and drag it, almost like a net. And it just absorbs all that fat. If you want the perfect fried bread, trust me, stick that in a frying pan. A nice teaspoon of mustard, whisk that in. And then simply simmer for a few minutes before pouring into a serving jug. Mm. With your pork belly, always use a nice serrated edge knife. You can hear that. Oh. That is amazing, incredibly tender. That belly of pork is going to almost melt in your mouth. You've got that sweet meat under that crispy belly of pork. What an amazing way to cook a very cheap cut of meat. Mouth-watering, smoky pulled pork with a spicy chipotle mayonnaise. That is the most amazing pork butt. Butts away. Butts away. <laughs> now, this is incredible. There's the shoulder. Yeah. And look, there's the shoulder blade. If you go through here, there's a knuckle there. That's connecting the top, and that's why it's called wow. a butt. The slower you cook it, the more juicier it is. And it's great for big parties, because you just come along and get your fork and shred it. A delicious, smoky mayonnaise, and you're away. Onions into half and half again. OK, I'm going to leave the roots on, OK, because I want this to sit underneath the pork. It gives it a chance to cook evenly and doesn't get dry in the bottom. Really important. OK. Now, I'll peel the garlic. OK, I'd like you uh, to crush the garlic. We're going to make a really nice little paste. OK? Yeah. Go on, Maggie. <laughs> no! Come on, come on, come on. Nice. Good girl. One more. Crush. Come on, Maggie. I'm coming. Oh. <laughs> Sorry okay, about that. Let me just give that little cut there. Now, this is a beauty. Paprika. Smoked paprika. Oh, I love it. So three nice tablespoons in. OK. Two large tablespoons of brown sugar. Salt, please. And pepper. Good go. So we're going to form a nice paste now. Olive oil in. Mix that. Add some thyme in there. So we've got a sort of fragrant rub. Thyme stalks underneath. So that's even more flavour going on the bottom. Pour that all over it. Now, this is where you've got to be really quick. OK. And sort of rub that. Mash sergeant in almost. It's exactly that. It smells amazing. Honestly. If you just drizzle a little touch of olive oil on top of that for me. I want to keep the pork nice and moist. Lovely. Like some of the best party dishes, the marinating of the pork shoulder can be done days in advance. So if I was doing this for a Sunday, i start marinating Thursday, Friday, so it gets even tastier. Right. It's quite easy as well to make. It's very easy. Five and a half to six hours in the oven. At 140. While our pork butt slowly roasts, Meg and I are going to pimp some shop-bought mayonnaise. 
I don't like just plain mayonnaise. There's so many things you, you can... It has twist to it. Yeah, there's so many things, so many exciting things you can do with it. Right. Salt. Pepper. In. No touch of honey. Sweetness. Almost. Yeah, Goodbye. sweetness. But there's some heat coming. OK, and I've got a little bit of... You love this. Chipotle. Smoked chipotle oh, paste. I love that. Once you've made this dressing, you know, it can sit in the fridge. Great for open sandwiches, yeah. Can you use it for any sandwiches, really? Any sandwiches, but goes brilliantly well with pork. Now, just have a little taste. Mm, I've never had this before. It's so good. A nice spoon of mustard. So, that's a nice spicy mayonnaise. After five and a half hours in the oven, our pork is nearly ready. Just time to knock up a couple of tried and tested party favourites. First, deliciously simple, cheesy crushed potatoes. Cut potatoes into even chunks and submerge in salted boiling water, skins and all. Meanwhile, finely dice sweet pickled gherkins or cornichons. Trim and finely chop spring onions. And grate some nutty Gruyere cheese. When the potatoes are cooked through, drain, roughly crush and add your spring onions and gherkins. Season to taste and gently combine before a final sprinkling of grated Gruyere. These simple, cheesy crushed potatoes are equally delicious, served hot or cold. Now, I want something sort of raw, like a slaw, something quite refreshing. Yeah. So I'm going to make a really nice, fresh broccoli salad. Now, these are called florets. And that's the best part of the broccoli, mm -hmm. OK? The bit that everybody wants. Once they're off, I'm going to slice the broccoli, OK? Mm-hmm. Never had raw broccoli before. Oh. It's always been cooked. Really? When you dress this with the dressing, it's incredible. Now, a little season early on. Yeah. OK. Now for the dressing. Fresh yoghurt in. Teaspoon of sugar, please, darling. A little smell. Cider vinegar. Mm, in you go. A finely chopped shallot. In with the broccoli. So, mm, delicious. Roasted almonds into the broccoli. Carrots. I love them. That gives that nice sort of chewy texture. Right, lift up your bowl, please. Nice and gently. Half of that in the middle, please. Thank you. And stop. And then mix that up with me. Good girl. A little taste. Mmm. Mmm. So good. And it's a kind of salad that doesn't wilt a couple of hours later. It's still crunchy because the broccoli's raw. Raw broccoli salad, chipotle. Mm -hmm. Now let me get the pork out. Look at this, look at this. Megan, honestly, that... Is amazing. It's beautiful. That is incredible. Now, that goes to the table like that. A Can delicious... we have a tiny bit just before we go to the table? Megan. Just a little bit. Honestly, Meg. Don't tell Mum. Thank you. Honestly. I feel like mm. I do it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> that is incredible. So good. You promised me you don't give the recipe to your boyfriend. Let's go. Come on. This is my ultimate easy party dinner. Melt in your mouth, slow cooked, smoky pulled pork with a spicy chipotle mayonnaise. And quick, simple sides of crushed cheesy potatoes and a light and healthy broccoli slaw.